Um, yeah, they allowed me to go to university and that was absolutely made up with that. And um, it was a bit of a struggle for me because I was going through all my stress at the time. Anyway, and um, Irene's mum had um, died. I got into university, started the course, started get my life back together again. Um, we learned out that we, me and Irene were like 64 grocery carriers we, and um, that was stressing me out. My mate, my mate in work died, uh, Charlie, um, and um, Arlene's mum had died of cancer. So um, and a month to the day I tried to top myself because uh, of all the stress. Yeah, that was probably one of the lowest points in my life. Um, yeah, that struggled for many years. I lost my voice at university because of all my stress. I lost it for about well, good, good over a year and a half, two years. Lost my voice. Found it very difficult because I had to do the presentations and everything. And um, yeah, I've gone through stress. I got you can say I've got the T-shirt. <laughs> These are my T-shirts. Overcoming my stress. So I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt. <laughs> anyway. And, but now I'm in a good place, you know, with, with the help of this, this year, I've actually managed to actually tackle all my stress head on. Like I say, most of the time I've always looked on the bright side of life, you know. Um, there's a lot, I mean, my problems are pale into the insignificance compared to a lot of people. There's lots of people out there that have got huge problems, you know. Um, mine kind of pales into insignificance when you think about it. You know, mine, mine kind of snowballed into something, started off from something very small and stupid into a huge bloody problem. And um, because you haven't addressed it, and then, you know, it, it just snowballed. But now I'm in a, in a good place. I'm doing all these positive things. Like I say, I'm still off work because um, I'm with a psychiatrist. They've increased my tablets um, and they just want to see how we get on, obviously, because they just want to make sure I'm all right and I'm not going to throw a wobbler again. Um, I mean, you know, my boss has you know, been really helpful and my company has been really helpful. Uh, they've been really understanding, you know, it's a very ethical company, I like, I like the ethics of the company, as I've stated in my, um, my thoughts and opinions on Brexit, which is on my website, um, you know, it's, I think the way forward is uh, using the, um, the ethics of a cooperative society, that's what I think, if you ever get a chance, have a look. <laughs> You might boy to stick, boy you stick, but I guess they're uh, my thoughts and opinions of how the country should be moving forward. And I suppose how the world should be moving forward really. We're all working together, not fighting against each other, causing wars and conflicts. But the world's mad. I'm getting all right, there's, there's quite a lot of characters in here that, that I've got to build up on here. So I guess doing these videos is, is really helping me, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm talking about my stuff um, and um, it's helping me. Like I say, People, lots of people out there have got lots of issues, you know. Like when I was in the um, the art class that I did with the presentation, there's, there's a few people there that um, was undergoing a lot of stress and issues and that, you know, they, they've got more worse problems than I have. You know, but um, I suppose 
try and understand, you know, and help if you can. Mm. Again, quite into the, doing this, these characters, they're looking really quite nice. <laughs> like I say, once I've, once I've done all these characters, I'll be leaving it to dry overnight, um, and then I'll be uh, varnishing the painting to, it, to, it act, to varnish it, it acts as a few things. It acts as to protect the painting and the characters, uh, and the ink. Um, as well, so on my earlier works I didn't really varnish them. Um, I think the Moss Eye collection that I did and I sold to a private collector uh, who actually, um, a guy called John, I won't tell his full name, but he was he helped me out um, and set me on this path to you know, doing all my artwork and, and selling my artwork in that. Uh, so he helped me out, he bought a large collection of my work. Um, and with the Moss Eye Collection, well, well the Moss Eye Collection is very nostalgic to me because it's so uh, where I grew up and uh, it references all my, well, not all my things but a lot of things in my childhood so Moss Eye was um, a rough place to grow up when I was younger um, but I thoroughly enjoyed it, we had, we had, some, we had some bloody laughs there, me and my mates we used to make uh, bogeys out of wood and prattle prams and things. <laughs> uh, playing street football. It's like, I feel sorry for the kids nowadays because, you know, they, they're just on the, the Playstations and that, you know, and they don't really tend to go out. Well, like we used to do, we used to go out from dawn till bloody dusk, you know. And being kids, being kids back then, you know. And I think a lot of kids have not really had that nowadays. <laughs> so you know the story about my dad. Now, um, he, like I said, he was in the RAF and. Um, they used to have like these outside toilets and uh, all the, the RAF guys had made them out of like lengths of wood, big long lengths of wood with coals in them and buckets underneath to put where your poo was going to go, go into. Um, anyway, my dad's there uh, sat reading his, reading his paper one day on the uh, on the toilet and uh, this flap opens up at the back while he's on the toilet chatting to his, when he's chatting to his mate and one of the maids who clean clean the, uh, the buckets out. Um, comes underneath him, grabs, grabs his bollocks and starts tickling him and says, Hello Johnny! <laughs> <laughs> Hello Johnny, bloody hell. <laughs> bloody rum buggers. I'm doing this Leeds logo now. It's just like a big, big banner I'm going to do on the, um, on the, the actual ground itself. So like I say it's, I've done, done it with a paint just in a free flowing style. I'm not going to do a perfect emblem of uh, Leeds um, Football Club. I'm just going to do like an indication. indication of the the logo Football 
Like I say, I've done a lot of um, pitches. Um, I've done uh, Manchester City. I've even done Manchester United. You know, so um, <clears throat> on there I've done Man City. Because I'm a Man City fan, I've done Man City grounds, United grounds, Liverpool, Everton. I'm kind of not biased in, in uh, a lot of the um, football clubs. Um, and um, I think um, I think you know with Leeds, uh, Leicester City Football Club, well, yeah, they did amazing, didn't they? I thought good look, good on them when they won that. You know, it's not often that you get a smaller club doing that. You know, I mean, City has been in, was in the doldrums for uh, for donkey's years. You know, um, for many many years. I kind of like didn't really follow much of football because I was just getting on with me with other stuff. I've not been a huge football fan all my life, um, but. Um, I did grow up in West Side and there was a, did used to do Magic Car Mister um, for all the all the football fans going to the game and then half, half time through the game they used to open up the uh, the the football ground Man City football ground for all the local kids to watch the second half of the game so we'd we'd be doing Magic Car Mister earning our money um, for the week for sweets jubilees fireworks all sorts of fun things. Um, and uh, it was just great in, in my side, you know, for that. You know, it might have been a rough place to grow up, but there was genuine people living there, you know. I was saying, one of my mates, um, Mark Edgerton, he's, um, he's one of he's my oldest mate, and Ricardo Carey, he's one of my, my oldest mates, he's uh, top, the top blokes, they really are. Uh, I say, Ricky and Mark were my best men, <laughs> best men, you know, when we were in. <laughs> well, such good laughs when we were kids. We had good days and bad days, you know, like everybody else. There was good people and bad people in my side. You get that wherever you wherever you live, good and bad, you know. You get that throughout society, no matter what race or religion you are, you know. There's always good and bad in every society. But it's about learning about taking the good up, taking the good with the bad, and. Um, Just having a happy life. Try and be as, as positive as you can, you know. I always remember one year, was it in Moss Side? There was this derelict uh, old shop on the near the corner of Claremont Road and Princess Road, and it was all full of derelicts. All the floorboards had been ripped up, well half of them, and um, somebody had this smart idea of um, putting all arcade machines in there, well, bloody, must have been about bloody hundred of them, arcade machines or something like that, um, pool tables and all sorts, it was bloody lethal, because <laughs> you go upstairs and there's like floorboards missing and all sorts, and um, there's lots of fights there as well at the time. Uh, but eventually it'll close down. So it was, yeah, that was another thing that, that was there. <laughs> Used to go to Georgie's Barbers um, as well. And in, in the back there, he was like, he had arcade machines. Um, he had arcade machines there and, and a pool table. So we used to play in the arcade machines and um, on the pool table. And he used to put when he wasn't looking, we used to like when you put the ball, you somebody put the hand there so the ball don't go down. <laughs> so you'd have a long bit longer on the on the pool table. <laughs> also, um, somebody thought with the idea of um, if you put like an electric gas fire lighter into the money slots of the arcade machines, then you get free credits. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of the guys used to do that. 
um, and get free free games and that. So they always worked out and started putting alarms on the um, <laughs> on the arcade the arcade machines. <laughs> Happy days. Now, I used to go to George's Barber, there's also um, a bar, an Irish barber opposite the B.I. pub. I think it was called Paddy it was. He was always drunk as a scumpy. He always had a whiskey on the side of him and a fag in his hand as he's cutting your hair. <laughs> he used to come out with a dodgy haircut. Now, I never used to get really haircuts until it was a bit later on. And because um, my mum and dad couldn't really afford it, you know. So um, I used to go around with like scraggy bloody hair for bloody months and then <laughs> looking like a night knob. But the only occasion when I had an hair cut, I used to get it like cut crop short. Yeah, most sides can like change from when I when I was a kid. Um, doesn't seem to be as uh, friendly a place as it is as it, as it used to be. But I suppose that's only my opinion. But we um, still got friends who have family and live there. Alright, I'll do the video. Take me out. Sorry, sweet. That's my daughter. Shut up! Yeah, she's annoyed at me because I woke her up because I'm talking. Typical teenager. I'm halfway through this painting, I'll just show you what I've done so far, so if you can see some of it, well, there some of the characters coming to life on there now, if you can see that, it's getting there, getting quite, quite liking this one now, it's, uh, like I say it's for present for Christmas for somebody this one. Um, I think they'll like it once I've done this. Now let's have a look at that. There's a bit of a statue there. I don't know what a statue is because I've never been to Ellen Road. Um, there's a bit of a statue there. I'll just put an indication of a statue there. I don't know where they're going to put it in, in the living room, this painting, or in the bedroom or anything. But I think these um, these football grounds do look really good because it's a cityscape. As, and it's not like, you know, when you get your, your football um, memorabilia or whatever, a lot of, you know, the time is the missus hates football and the miss, the mister, um, once the football in the living room, but this is a bit of a, a compromise really because they look good, um, you know, on, on the on the on the walls. Like I say the next painting we've got to do because I went out to town with my mate the other night um, and went down to Piccadilly Gardens and there were some really lovely scenes, you know, where it's pitch black at night. And you could see all the lights shining from what they had lights on the trees and um, the actual fountain now uh, it lights up in all different colours um, and it looks really 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 nice you know so I'm going to do some nice scenes of that I took some nice photos and I've got about four um, images from that 
and I'm going to turn them into, a, into the cityscapes. Well, I'll probably start with just the one because I can't really afford to splash out um, on a lot of canvases. Uh, but I'll, I think the next one I'm going to do is going to be the um, is going to be that. I'm going to be doing that. I'm looking forward to doing that one next. Once I finish this painting. So, talking about football, was it me and my mate years ago? I had an, an old mini, you know, the, the, the first minis, the small minis, going down, I think it was to Hull to watch a game uh, with my mate. And um, going down the motorway towards Hull, all of a sudden the bloody bonnet of me mini flipped up right in front of me, or through my windscreen, straight up, all the welding of it had, had come up, come away. <laughs> He's like that, my mate's shitting himself, what are you going to do? And I've got my head sticking out the window, just guide us in. <laughs> Ended up pulling to one side and I had to strap it down with a rope. <laughs> uh, some of the bloody cars I've had. Uh, and uh, I had that many, I decided that I um, um, fit a stereo into my car. So, fitting this car stereo, um, in my car, now, I'm no electrician, but I thought I'd have a go and did the wiring, but there was like this wire that was that was missing, and I thought, oh, it's nothing. And then you kind of forgot forgot to tie it down, and was just dangling. Anyway, I'm just driving down the road towards the um, towards the M60, and. Um, where the Snooty Fox used to be, there used to be a pub called Snooty Fox, I think there's the uh, McDonald's there in court there now. Um, anyway, this, I turned the car a bit and um, the bloody wire flicked itself and hit the, the, the steering column and in seconds the car filled up with smoke because <laughs> it was obviously a live wire. Filled the car with smoke and I was on the outside lane, I had to come right into the inside lane and uh, into this um, into the bus stop and all the all the, all the people out right the bus stop were scattered because all my car was full of smoke. Jumped out and uh, turned the engine off and they kind of like, sorted it then. But bloody hell, shit myself. <laughs> that was another time I was on the motorway and I saw these cars in front of me. Was zipping, zipping off all directions for what's going on, then this car in front of me zipped and I saw what it was. It was a bloody settee right in the middle of the road, as if somebody watching bloody TV like bloody Simpsons. <laughs> Just avoided that, then it crashed into that bloody thing. Uh, gotta be careful on the roads. So I'm nearly coming to the end of this painting in a minute. Um, I'm putting these characters on. They're looking all right so far. I've just got some new business cards printed up. My mum kindly bought them for a Christmas present. So um, she said my little bit low go now. Because I did on my previous business cards, it was just on, on my motorbike. Uh, so I've got a nice logo on my business cards now. It's like this Manchester beat with all my paintings around it. Um, just highlighting what I kind of do. So we. So it looks quite good. I've also got like a sticker on the back of my car um, with, um, with that logo on as well. Kind of a bit of a, trying to draw up a bit of advertisement really to see if I can sell my paintings. Sold a few uh, over the last month. Um, they keep, they keep, they're kind of rolling in. But um, it's not really 
we'll see how it goes. You know, they are getting more popular in my artwork um, that I'm doing. Never heard it displayed in any any art galleries or anywhere like that. Um, I guess um, I've not, never been really um, promoted anywhere. I'm kind of just doing this promotion myself. I've approached a few galleries, but they've kind of like turned me down and that thing for whatever reason. Well, there must be something in it because people are buying me artwork. I say I do like um, the way I do things now. It's a free-flowing style that I enjoy doing, and it's a bit of a twist, a new twist on Lowry, on Lowry's work, I'd say. Do it in a, a modern style. I think I'm done there now. Yeah. So that's the final stage on, on the um, apart from the varnishing. I'll be varnishing it next time um, as well. Just to put a verse. It's like I've done the last one. I won't be videoing the, the varnishing. But there you go. Let's show you the painting. So that's the the painting of uh, Leeds Football Ground for a Christmas present. Uh, I don't know if you can see the characters in there that I've done. On there. You've got the football group. You know, there, but I think that's, that's turned out not too bad. So, um, so everybody. Thanks very much for watching again today. Uh, hope it's not been like watching paint dry. <laughs> and um, enjoy your rest of the day. Be positive and um, I'll see you next time. Alright, have a good day.